it must never be forgotten that this constitution is citizen centric. It is for the citizens to decide to donate. If you want corporate funding, then that corporate funding must be for the electoral process, it must not be for political parties. Otherwise, it would not be free and fair election. We now look at question C, frequently asked questions FAQ, page 138. Question number 36. 128. 138, question 36. My Lord has that? Who is, is the bona fide owner of the electoral bond? PDF 138. Who is the electoral owner of that? Uh, who is the bona fide owner of that bond? Electoral bonds are bearer banking instruments. It's exactly what my Lord the Chief Justice said. And the holder of elected bonds is the bona fide owner of the same. Every scheme must have a legi legitimate object. What's the legitimate object here? Which is constitutional. It is, it, the, the scheme must be such, it must be proportionate to the object sought to be achieved. And it, the underlying principle under the constitution is free and fair election which is a basic feature of the Constitution. How are you serving these three purposes, Mothers? You are serving none of these three. No legitimate object because the, it is not limited to the uh, elections. No proportionality because it's unlimited. And no free and fair elections because my learned friend has shown to your lordships how heavily it is loaded towards the party in power. So you are creating a non-level playing field through the electoral bonds. And that's violative of 324. Now, Malaz, historically, as your lordship knows, Malaz, in 1969, through legislation, we had Miller's prohibited corporate donations altogether. In the 1985 Miller's, through an amendment, we said, okay, the corporate sector can donate, but only to the extent of 5% of the average earnings in the last three years, three financial years. 5% or 7.5%? I'm sorry? Okay. Initial 5%. Well, as 85 was 5%, then through an amendment, it was 2013 Act, it was changed to 7.5. 2000? 13. The Companies Act. Well, actually, I've put it all in the written submissions, but because my blended colleagues are waiting for me to end, so I'm not wanting to take their time, well, as your lordships have said that do it, you know, be as short as possible. But whatever I have said to your Lordships, Malaj, are the propositions that emerge from the scheme itself. Mr. Sibyl, submissions are in which volume? Uh, volume 1. Again, Volume 1, right? Yes, yes Volume right. 1. All, all, the submissions all the submissions are in Volume that. 1. Yes, we got it. And it's page, page 48. 48, yes. PDF 48. Done. And if you just... I'll take a few minutes, Mother, then I'll be done. Because my learned friends, I want to give them time too. The first, Mother's few pages are just the scheme itself, the electoral bond scheme itself, goes up to uh, goes up to page PDF page sixty-three. My lords have that. It's just the elements of the electoral bond scheme which have already been Mother's explained to your lordships. So I will not I will not trouble your lodges with that. That's been explained. But you come to 63, then Malad, I deal with the issue of free and fair elections under the under under the constitution. And I say it's the basic feature of the constitution. And it's now recognized that para 15, Malad, I say, as as will be developed below any nature of funding that is opaque and that seeks to hide the source of funding is contrary to the spirit of free and fair elections, which is part of the basic structure. That's the transparency argument, plus the free and fair in the context of which, well, it's in the context of my submissions before your lordships now. Then, election is a vehicle of representative democracy. 
I've given judgments, Murads, page 66, and then para 17 at 66 is the constitutional mandate of free and fair elections under the principle of universal adult franchise is the central pillar of our democratic culture. Under our political system, elected representatives do not have any political legitimacy independent of the will of the people and must discharge their duties in public trust. Well, the shareholder argument, well, that I placed there, paragraph 43, the objects of the company and all that, which I've already made a comment from it upon. Then I've given the history. Then 2013, my Lord asked the question, the cap of 7.5, that's at paragraph 47. And actually, Mother, there's a wonderful report of Justice Shah, I think, at the Law Commission, which actually sets out the practices in all the countries, UK, US, Japan, Philippines, um, Australia, and Germany. And in all those countries, there is no question of any opacity. Most countries do not allow corporate donations at all. But where they do allow, there is no opacity. And this is all at PDF page. You may know, only note it. 296 in volume 4. That, that my learning for that Kishan Bhushan has covered. That's really it, Malas. I, I want to take as little time as possible. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Deeply. Then, uh, Therefore, Maras, you must interpret superintendent's direction and control of the conduct of elections in that context. That's set out at page 67, end of paragraph 19. Then I differentiate between freedom and fairness, which is para 20. I, I won't, Maras, trouble your logic with the, with the language. And para 24, I say economic power at page 68. Economic power presents a grave risk to any level playing field between individual citizens and groups and give, can give some voices a disproportionate say in deciding the agenda of the political parties and hence the laws and policies that will govern the entire country. In pluralistic democracies like India, practices must emerge that preserve the equal voice of all citizens and that ensure that the special needs of all groups are heard. But if the voice of the corporate sector Mother's drowns the voices of citizens. Mother's, that's a very dangerous trend in democracy. Then, Mother's, I've Justice Bhagwati's judgment in Kamala Gupta's case. Let's leave that out, Mother. I think that's one extreme position which I don't want to argue. And then, Mother's, then this is important. Kindly see, Mother's, uh, para 36 at page 72, reiterating my learned friend's submission that it's the voters' right to know. That's fine. And well, this whole concept of black money, I mean, I don't understand <laughs> the cash that is given below 2,000 can be black money. The 20,000 rupees has to be disclosed. That also can be black money. Because you can say cash in hand, 20,000 rupees. And the electoral bond can also be black money. And over, above, over and above that, there is black money. Because there is cash that doesn't go into electoral bonds. So what is this black money issue about? The kind of extravaganzas that we see, mothers, is what? Is it white money? So this has nothing to do with black money. This is, the, this is the case of the government. That black money was used earlier, no doubt. Black money is used today, no doubt. There is more cash in the market than it was in 2014 or 2019. That's government's own statistics. So black money is a bogey. And all three elements can be part of black money. That can't be an argument. So delta. And then, so the three issues, Mullahs, I have raised at page PDF 75, whether corporate donations should be allowed at all. But that's not a question that your lordships has to answer. If yes, which what kinds of companies should be allowed to make such decisions? If corporate donations are allowed, what cap of net profits should be set? And who is the appropriate body within the corporation to authorize such donations? That's if you agree to all what the other side says. If you agree to what the government says, Mother, then these questions will arise. But that's subject to my submission that I've made to your laws. 
So, issue which we are just discussing on, which perhaps the learner attorney may give us an answer, but since Mr. Sibyl is on his leg, we will just put it to him, Mr. Attorney and Mr. Sarasra, you can also, any of turn, you can answer. Suppose A purchases the bond. Yes. A purchases bonds worth X amount, 100 crores. Yes. A, A is only the person who has been put up to purchase the bond because that's that's awesome. A has a KYC, etc. Yes, yes, yes. A has to only physically hand over the bond to B. Yes. Right? Who's in or B gives it to C, who will in turn give it to a political party. Correct. Now, B, there is no control over the transaction between A and B. Yes. So B can trade on that bond for cash or for yes. whatever other consideration. Yes, yes. B acquires that bond. Yes. B hands it over to a political party. Yes. Or B gives it to C and C hands it over to a political party. Yes. The person who has satisfied the requirement of the transaction being through the normal banking channels is A, the purchaser, the ostensible yeah. purchaser of the bond. Correct. But this does not obviate the fact that the people who are really behind, behind it, it yes. that they have used authorized banking channels. Yes. All that they have to do is that the, the Get somebody's KYC. Says trading is prohibited, yeah. but there is no way you can prohibit Absolutely. trading the bonds. Absolutely. B doesn't have to buy the bond from no, A doesn't. through official banking no, no, channels. Because no. Because there is no record of any transactions in the bond. It that's just goes from hand to hand. That's right. Because of the curtain, then you cannot be any questions with regard to quid pro quo. That's right. And then well, ultimately, the person who is actually invested in it is the person who will tell the political party. Who is the holder ultimately? No, no. no. In this case, probably, the they'll know who is the Could purchaser. Could be B or C. <laughs> Could they know the purchaser, but... The actual purchaser is A. B. Exactly. Whereas the in the in the KYC etc. A is the one who's. That's right. Absolutely right. So, Mala, this is it, it is a it 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 perpetuates. It also, B may be an aggregator of the bonds. That also. By having ten different people subscribe to hundred different people subscribe to a bond right. worth one crore each. That's right. Mala, there the human at least the Indian human mind is ingenious in these matters. <laughs> we control the economy of the world in many ways. And the RPI raised these concerns repeatedly. <laughs>